Good morning. Oh my gosh, it is so cold today. <gasps> I woke up and I'm like, come on. Like, this is really upon us. But anyway, I live in Michigan, right? So you expect it. Don't complain about it. <laughs> Appreciate it. Embrace it, you know? So, okay. <clears throat> I thought about a topic this morning. Um, thought that I would share uh, because I get a lot of questions on this kind of stuff, you know, and people get very confused because there is so much, um, there's so many opinions out there and people oftentimes don't know what to believe and, you know, which side of the fence should I be on? Should I be on any side of the fence? That kind of stuff. So I'm just going to give you my experience and my opinion and to give you some insight. Um, pretty soon I'm going to be launching out two things that will help you out with this as well, which is my, um, my ebook as well as my uh, new online program, which is called the power of three. And I think you're going to really like that. Good morning. Good morning. Hi Marie. Hi Christy. Hi Marsha. Hi everybody. Thanks for hopping on. Um, so I have those up and coming tools and resources for you, which is going to be super helpful. But I know that um, the holidays are coming upon us. I know that there's a lot of posts out there right now about keeping the holiday pounds down and New Year's are, is coming and all of that. This is my best advice to you on that, which is don't look at it as... Um, just look at it as another day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you need to live your life in the sense that you have, you know, routines and you have um, consistency when it comes to eating right and exercise. And that when it comes to the holiday, you don't have that mindset of, oh, I'm just going to do whatever I want. And then I'll draw the line in the sand on the 31st and start over on the first, you know, like let's kind of get rid of that whole mindset. So let's talk about mapping out your workouts first and just want to give you some tips on how I map my workouts out. Um, it's planned ahead of time, um, but it's also very flexible. So for example, if I, um, you know, I have, I have it planned out on my, uh, my calendar. If something doesn't work out like today, for example, <clears throat> I'll, I'll give you some insight on today. If something doesn't work out, I don't stress out about it because I have myself mapped out. So I have room for that flexibility and know that, okay, you know, I have something in there every single day, but I know realistically that I will probably do five, maybe four out of the seven. Sometimes I hit all seven. Sometimes I don't. It just depends on two things. It well, actually three things. <clears throat> it depends on like, you know, weather, Ayana and how I feel. So I allow the room for that flexibility. So for example, today I had every intention on going to spinning class. However, Kirby and I did very heavy weights on my legs yesterday and my hip flexors are tight and my knees are bothering me just a little bit. And so I had to make a game time decision. Do I still go? Do I spin? Or is that going to um, help or harm, right? So I thought, well, let me, let me, dip out on my spinning class this morning, let me get some work done, and then perhaps I'll go a little later and see how I feel. So that, this is where the rest comes in. And so when it comes to your rest, it depends on your training program. Now most of the time, your average individual is not engaging in something that is so, you know, so energy, uh, like taking such energy expenditure, I guess you would say, where you have to include, okay, I got to put a rest day in here because I did yesterday. Most people, your average individual doesn't really need to plan the rest days unless you're doing like, you know, a strategic weight training type of program. Okay, um, like for myself, I do a lot of weights. I do, I push a lot of heavy weight. It's only because I've been weight training for a lot of years. So fortunately, you know, your, your muscle has memory and, you know, you maintain strength and things like that. Um, and so I'm able to do that, but I've worked my way there, you know, for a long time. So my rest days are not really mapped out. They're not really planned. I just give myself that opportunity to say, okay, just like today. Okay, you know what? Maybe you need to just dip out on the spin class, see how you feel later, and then maybe go later if you feel 
Or maybe today you might need that rest. Maybe you need to sit in the sauna and do a rest and recover. Or maybe <clears throat> later on you might feel that you you don't want to go to Orange Theory or maybe just go and walk on the treadmill for 60 minutes or something like that. So the way that my map looks is I obviously have consistent days with Kirby, for example. So I always know that, like right now my schedule with him is, to, it used to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Then I moved it to Tuesday, Wednesday. Now I'm moving it again to Tuesdays and Fridays. So I know, for example, that I'm going to be with him every Tuesday and Friday. So those are done deals. Then I know that I like to go to spinning at LA Fitness. Now here's, here's another example. And this is where you can't get all worked up and all upset where you have to be flexible and know that sometimes life gets in the way or sometimes your schedule changes or sometimes you're just not feeling up for it, but you have to have those days already kind of plugged in so that you have a plan, so that you have a plan in advance and you got to be flexible about it. <clears throat> so like my spinning, um, you know, and it changes quite a bit. So her class is always the same. It's always Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So there were some weeks when I was going every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Then I just started going every Thursday and Saturday. Then I just started going Saturdays. Then the last couple weeks, I haven't been going at all. <laughs> and it's not because I fell off the wagon, because I don't do that. But, and I want you to get out of that mindset of being on or off or all in or all off, you know, that kind of thing. But I have made my... Um, my content creation a priority the past couple of weeks because I really wanted to get that program created, the power of three, and finish up my ebook and get some of those things done. So I sacrificed some of those things, right? Um, but I made up for it in other in other day on other days or other ways and in different workouts and things like that. So in my mind, my goal is to always work out no less than four days. If I do three, it's okay. But am I like, oh God, I'm gonna get fat, freaking out? No. It's kind of like, you know, that's just the way that that my week ended up. No big deal. Map out next week. Let's shoot for the five to seven and do what's realistic, always listen to your body type of thing, okay? So like for example, my Mondays are pretty flexible. There's not really a class per se that I really wanna go to like Carla's spinning class. Um, you know, I kind of leave Mondays as my kind of option, um, you know, decide when you wake up kind of thing. You know, do you wanna go to LA and just do some, you know, weight training from, I, I have this awesome um, program that I'm following too through my friend Cody. Um, he's awesome, Cody Boom Boom. And um, <clears throat> so I have a weight training program that I follow on my own when I'm not with the curbs. And, um, you know, it's, I don't overwhelm myself or anything like that, but I have this plan. And so Mondays I could wake up and say, yeah, you know what, let's go do some weights. Or I could say, you know what, today I want to just take it easy and catch up around the house or whatever. <clears throat> Tuesdays was with the curbs, but I'm looking at my map for next week. So I'm just going to kind of tell you. So next, next week, this is my plan. Monday weights on my own, Tuesday orange theory, Wednesday is the curbs, Thursday spinning and do some weights, Friday is the curbs, Saturday spin class, and Sunday orange theory. Now, will I make all of those classes? We don't know, but that's my map. I know for a fact that, you know, unless something crazy happens, that I'll be for sure seeing Kirby on Wednesday and Friday. And the other days, I have to kind of play by ear, A, see how I feel. Hopefully, Ayana is accommodate, being accommodating when it comes to her sleeping. Usually, she's up and I'm able to get her ready. But if she's sleeping, I'm not going to, you know, wake her up or if she's had a rough night. And then I'll just kind of make adjustments accordingly. So I have all seven days mapped out. Do I make the seven days some weeks? Yes. Most of the time, no. But at least I have a map and I have a plan. So this is my recommendation to you. Always set yourself up for success in having the plan. If you don't plan something, then you're not holding yourself really accountable. Okay? Um, now, with regard to, like I said, with the rest days, once again, your average person, just listen to your body. You know if you're not feeling it. You know if you are just like, God, if I go, oh. Uh, because let me tell you this. I would absolutely 1,000% recommend to choose rest, meaning sleep. Do not ever sacrifice your sleep for an exercise session. So if you wake up and you're feeling like, oh my God, so that was kind of like me today. It's not like I wanted to go back to bed, 
but it was like, okay, my legs are, you know, they're kind of tired. So, you know, I have to kind of listen and really listen to my hips and, you know, all of that. So, um, if you are somebody where your magic hour, and this is the other thing too, is you need to figure out where your magic hour is when it comes to your exercise. My magic hour is not later in the day. Okay, when I work out with Kirby at four o'clock, that's a tough time for me, um, but it's the best time for my family. My magic hour is mid morning, between like nine and 11. That's when I can really feel my best. Why? Most of it is because, you know, hormonally, if you are familiar with your cortisol levels and things like that, your, your cortisol is, you know, at its highest peak first thing in the morning and it starts to dip down and, and all of that. So, you know, you kind of have that kind of up and pick me up and, and all of that. And so, um, my magic hours in the morning. So I try to really make sure that I map my exercise uh, sessions around that time. But again, sometimes I can't, you know, I'm, I'm on somebody else's schedule now, you know, that I have a little peanut. So um, map out your week, put something in there every single day, even if it's just movement and movement, meaning walking, restorative yoga, you know, that, that, that kind of stuff. Um, every day doesn't have to be balls to the wall like crazy, you know, but if you feel it, do it, you know. So map out your week. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about that I get tons of questions on is what do I eat? What do I eat pre and post? There's actually a pre and a post post. Um, <clears throat> and eating is really, really important, you guys. The exercise more, eat, or exercise more, eat less model does not work. So if you are doing that, I'm just warning you that you could be setting yourself up for metabolic issues big time. Um, that used to be something that I believed in for years, and it's not the way to go. You're going to be in hormonal havoc, um, and it's, yes, you do need to have a caloric deficit to lose weight, you guys, but you can't reduce your calories down to the point where you're barely eating anything. Now, there is something that your body, I want to get too sciencey here, but, you know, our bodies need a specific amount of calories just to be, just to sit, to digest, to actually function in our brain and to actually just be here. And oftentimes, most people are eating less in their day than their body actually needs just to sit there. And that's not even including the exercise that you do even around your house <laughs> or walking. And that doesn't include the actual exercise that you're doing in the gym and things like that. So, you know, in my education and learning and, and all of that, I am so fascinated. And actually, I'm, you know, I never really got, I didn't really delve into nutrition too much with my clients in the past when it came to personal training. Um, those of you that know me know that that is a huge part of my background. I was in that industry for 25 years. Now I'm more so into the lifestyle nutrition stuff. And so I talk a lot about, you know, like your sleep, your stress, um, your nutrition, your eating, your hormones, all of that stuff. So I'm kind of on that other side of the fence, but they do dance together. However, um, you know, when it comes to what people think they need to do isn't what they need. Um, with my clients, when they first come to me, one of the biggest things that we focus on is, okay, let's make sure you're getting your sleep, which you need at least seven to nine hours. Let's make sure that we are managing your stress. And now let's take a look at your quality of food and how much you're eating and things like that. Sometimes we need to refeed them. And what I mean by refeed is, you know, it's kind of a, a, a weird, odd term. Um, refeed, reverse diet, um, that kind of stuff. Sometimes I need to take people in the direction of eating more before they can even lose any weight. Because if I try to reduce their calories even more, nothing is going to happen. Nothing. Okay, so because most of the time most people are not eating enough, um, I cannot take them down that rabbit hole where in the future they're going to be, or even then, they're going to be in a position of, you know, not being able to do a thing. So if you are somebody that is stuck, if you are somebody that's like, I don't know what is going on, I exercise all the time, I don't eat that much, you know. We could have a problem here, and this is why. It's because you know what happens is people metabolically adapt. Each time that you reduce your calories, your body is uh, is designed to protect itself. You have to remember that we are dealing with 
this is a skin suit. This is, this is a machine, a suit basically that has been adapting for millions of years, okay? So we are, are, are against, um, you know, when we, us, you know, trying to diet and things like that, we really have a lot working against us more than you realize. So there's a lot more that goes into, you know, the counting of the calories and, and all of that stuff. So anyway, I, here I am going on a soapbox. I could do, I do this all the time. <laughs> you know me, shiny ball. But um, let's talk about the pre and post posts, okay? So first of all, make sure that you're eating. Okay, make sure that you're eating. If you if you're at all interested in, in learning any more about you know what I do as far as that goes, because I do have a couple of options when it comes to my coaching. I have the lifestyle end of things, but I also have macro coaching, and macro coaching is a little bit different, but it, it's also extremely um, helpful, and it's a it's just a little bit different style of coaching that I do. Um, so anyway, back to the pre and post post. So the pre-workout would be something that is carb protein. Um, I would recommend if you can, if you can, if you can, um, 90 minutes, maybe 60 minutes prior to your workout, having something that's like a carb um, protein mix and, you know, just kind of keep it simple. It's easy, digestible. Okay, so what you don't want to do, and this is a mistake that I've made in the past, is I've added, like, let's say I'm like, oh, I'm going to have some vegetables, like broccoli, in my eggs, and then I'll have a little piece of gluten-free toast, you know, and then I'm like, oh my God, I can't breathe. Oh my God, I'm so heavy in my stomach. Well, the problem is, is when I would put the vegetables in there, it's not going to digest easy, and it's not going to be utilized for energy. So, you know, adding those vegetables in just slow down the process. And so it's not, that's not something that you want to mix in prior to exercise. So if you're feeling that way, or if you're feeling like you get indigestion or, you know, feeling heavy and that you can't breathe, really evaluate what you're looking at prior to eating and look at the window of time that you were eating. So let's say, like for example, I had every intention of going to spinning and then I started to realize, ah, eh, you know, I might need to, to wait until later. So <clears throat> this morning I had a little like gluten-free pancake and then just a small little portion of egg whites. Now let me tell you something. If you are somebody that likes eggs, if you are somebody that doesn't like eggs, you know, but if you like eggs, I've shared this before, but get yourself some of those liquid egg whites. They are a game changer when it comes to your protein intake. Game changer, okay? Because most of the time people are not eating enough protein either. So when people give me their numbers, I'm like, oh, this protein, we're eating probably half the amount that we really need to. Okay, so um, a good rule of thumb on that, okay, good rule of thumb, it, and again, everybody is different, and it depends on your metabolism, it depends on your activity level, all that stuff, but a good rule of thumb when it comes to protein is like, um, um, you could say a gram per body weight, but I would say a little bit less than that, you know, um, so for example, my protein grams per day is 145. Okay, 145 grams of protein a day I hit. And I can be within five. I can get up to 150 or I can go down to 140. So anywhere in between there. Now, do I weigh 145 pounds? No. So I'm not quite having one gram per, uh, per body weight. Okay, so just kind of a rule of thumb there. But I also have a coach that I work with and he's very, um, you know, on top of my numbers and so am I. Um, it's helped tremendously. I've never felt better. I can think. Um, I My performance in the gym is much better. Um, I'm losing inches. I am starting to lose weight now too. I needed to be refed. I was one of those that needed to be reversed that I was talking to you about because I let my busy schedule and my lifestyle get in the way. And, you know, I was like, oh, I'll just eat when I, you know, yeah, I'll just eat whenever. Not really realizing like, hey, man, you know, for all that I do and all that I want to do, I needed to get some more damn food in my body. And, you know, <clears throat> this is why having a coach and things like that is so important. I will always have a coach. Always. 
Always. I will always find it in my budget to have a coach. I need that person because I always want to continue to better myself and better myself and, and you know, just make sure that I am being held accountable because I don't care who you are. You know, you could be, you know, like, I mean, think about this. Think about like even athletes. They know what the hell they're doing. They know exactly what to eat. But they always have coaches. In fact, they probably have several coaches <laughs> because they need that extra set of eyeballs. They need that person that's going to hold them accountable. And they need that person that's going to help them continuously to up level and kind of pull them up and pull them up or be that cheerleader, you know. And so like when I will message James every week on my um you know, when it comes to my check-ins and things like that, just getting his response, like, he, he's funny, he's from the South, and he'll say, golly, <laughs> it's, so funny. it's so funny, golly, girl, you know, you're doing so good, or, you know, or Kelly, make sure you're doing this, or, you know, Kelly, you gotta, you know, get consistent on that, or whatever it may be, and so I feel like I owe him, you know what I'm saying, and so that's where that whole aspect comes in, but back to the pre-workout, so, you want to have something that is like a carbohydrate protein mix. You don't want to necessarily add in any extra fats. You want to make sure that you are eating something that is going to be easily digestible and that is going to give you that energy that you need to get you through your workouts. Now, if you uh, find yourself in a position like, oh crap, you know, I'm, I'm going to be working out here in about 30 minutes or I work out super early in the morning. You know, there are people <clears throat> that, you know, you can try working out fasted. Some people do like to, to work out fasted. I used to be that person, but I have found that I perform so much better having that fuel in me. Um, but if you do find yourself in a predicament where you um, don't have that 60 to 90 minutes to have that meal, then I would recommend a, um, you know, just like a little bit of a protein shake, nothing crazy. Um, as far as your post-workout, immediately after, I would highly recommend that you have a protein shake um, for two reasons. Because the if you have a little bit of carb and a little bit of protein, you're going to immediately shut off the cortisol. Now, when you exercise, you are in fight or flight mode. You are in a stress mode. So your cortisol levels are going to be up. So what we need to do is we need to bring in some insulin. We have to have the insulin come in to shut the cortisol off. So we're going to shoot our insulin up slightly to get that insulin spike. That's going to shut the cortisol off, and it's also going to help to replenish um, the glycogen in the muscles, okay? Kind of sciencey, but I know some of you guys want to know that information. Some of you don't. Some of you could care, a, care less, and you're just like, just tell me what to do, um, and that's that. So that's a little bit of science behind it. Um, then about an hour after that, you want to have a nice, solid, good, you know, protein, carbohydrate kind of meal. So, you know, you want to be strategic when it comes to your, um, to your goals. You want to have a plan. And in order to be effective and in order to, uh, you know, get results and, and maintain consistency, you have to have these types of plans. And you have to have, you know, you have to make your time. You have to make sure that you are, okay, I got to make time to, you know, get my greens in and, and all of that. Recently, I snapped a picture. Some people thought I was crazy, but that's okay. But that's, those are the things that I need to operate optimally. You know, it's um, something that makes me feel good, which are my greens, my, you know, my green tea, my CBD oil, my protein shakes. I walk out. So a lot of times with two shakes in my hand, <laughs> you know, my reds and my BCAAs, you know, all these things. And is it, can it be expensive? Um, certainly, but I don't look at it like that. I don't ever look at um, an investment as something that is in expensive. I just look at it as something that is an investment in my body and the return is that I'm feeling good and that I am, you know, operating at my optimal. And so, try to shift your thinking away like I can't afford that or I can't afford all these supplements and things like that you know just think of it as you know it's nutrients to your body we've got one body man that's it you know just one body and so you have every opportunity to look and feel your best and again it's not about you know oh I want to be the prettiest and you know all that it's you really just want to feel your best so that you can do your best 
And when you do your best, gosh, sky is the limit. You just never know. You just never know what can happen. So um, my my best advice to you um, and, and all of your fitness and wellness goals is stop focusing on the scale, but focus more on the feeling. Focus on feeling good. Focus on your energy. Focus on your food quality. Just focus on like being a good citizen like a good citizen to your body like a good you know you have to think of it like this is this is your shell in a way I know that sounds really weird not everybody is kind of like on the same page or in, in uh, you know as woo woo as I am but that's just kind of like how I look at it is it's just a, a vessel and we have to take good good care of it okay so thanks for tuning in. If you're just now hopping on, um, just, you know, watch the replay. Um, gave lots of good information and nuggets and information. Um, but again, like I said, you have to have a plan. Map out your workout. Um, think about what you're going to eat pre and post. Be very strategic about all of this. Think of yourself as an athlete. That's the, you know, I always think about Tom Brady. Um, you know, I, I think he's fascinating. I think that, um, you know, he's definitely somebody that, if I could be in the room with somebody, it would be him, okay? And, uh, you know, always kind of think about those things, like who are you surrounding yourself by? And uh, not only just the quality of your food, but think about the quality of who you're hanging around with, the places that you're going, and also the thoughts and the things that you are thinking and seeing. So, you know, be very mindful of Netflix and the news and all of that stuff because that um, will definitely affect you as well. So that's a whole other conversation. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you are, you know, if you were with me now, you're going to see that little live tag right there. But if that's not there, then that means that you're in the replay. So hit hashtag replay. Let me know that you watched. Stay tuned for my up and coming ebook and my Power of Three program, which is a fat loss formula. Um, that will be coming out very soon as well. And so you guys will be the first to know. So have a wonderful day. Message me if you have any questions, and we'll talk soon.